Okay, with the coolant lines removed, you can just pull the intake assembly out of the engine compartment. And you're gonna to wanna to put it in the back of the car. Because that's where the parts go that we're gonna reuse. Here we go. You know what we need? We need some a dream come true piece of cardboard. So now put the intake in the back of the car. Don't get anything dirty. Next part of this job is gonna be removing the, the the water pump, which is brand new. I just put that in, I can't believe it. But uh, yeah. The old, the old new water pump comes out because there's not enough space here. You see that? The frame rail versus the water pump. The frame rail is going to win there. So we take out the water pump. While we're at it, we're going to remove the hose for the radiator hose to the thermostat. It should be fairly easy to get off. Especially since I got it draining over there. Let's see if there's any any liquid in there. Oh, there is. So uh, we'll just wait till we're done on the other side. See over there. Still draining over there. So let's try again. Let's try it. Uh, nope. There's still stuff in there. So we'll just. Wait. Okay. Here's what it looks like under the car. In the back. We got to disconnect the oxygen sensor and the position sensor. Here's the position sensor right here. That's an easy one. Ugh. Well, it was. Not today, it's not. So the oxygen sensor, you got to unclip that. It's always easier with two hands. Jeez. And then there's the uh, clip back here. You see that clip? That's one of those pry clips. You gotta pry the little tab up, and then it comes loose. You gotta get your fingernail in there. What a bitch! Well, you're gonna have to take my word for it because I can't show you. None of these are coming off with one hand. Oh, there's the there's the oil sending unit back there. So you get the idea. You got to take all those apart. When you're done draining, the antifreeze close the pet cock. Okay, close that thing back up. You're gonna be glad that you did when you fill it up later after installing the new engine. Now with the radiator drained we can remove the lower oh well, there's the upper radiator hose. We'll remove the upper radiator hose. I want to remove it at the bottom of the bottom of the radiator. Right there. I'm gonna go grab well here it is on the bottom, just like we figured. We'll grab it with some vice grips. There we go. When you want to remove the radiator hose, grab it with some pliers. Give it a little twist. And it'll come right off. All right, here's the fun part for you guys to watch me get doused with antifreeze. I really dislike antifreeze. I don't know if you guys know that. It's like syrup. You get it on you. It's, it's kind of nasty. It's running down my arm. It's just super nice. I love when it runs down my arm. Oh, and it tastes like shit too. Can't believe that. I believe I got some in my mouth. 
All right, so that's the lower radiator. Well, upper radiator hose looks like lower, but it's upper. And then, uh, I think we're done with the coolant for a while. This I know you guys don't believe me, but there's there's coolant running down my arm, man. I can't believe it. All right, so grab that hose. Grab that hose. And then where's the hose go? You guys know where the hose goes? It's gonna go in the back of my car. Yeah. Yuck. Let me just throw it in the back. Okay, we're gonna remove the AC compressor. I found that the AC compressor bolts get get pretty corroded, so we're gonna throw a little penetrating oil there. And also the trans bolts get kind of uh, corroded, so we're gonna try to get try to get a little on there. Some of them, anyway. Try to get them loosened up a little bit. Okay, here's the order of things here. We're going to remove the dipstick to bolt. Then we're going to remove the thermostat line. That's what I always call it. The thermostat, thermostat line comes from the EGR cooler over there. Remove the thermostat line because it's going to dump antifreeze down into the pan. But if you're not careful, you take this tube out, the dipstick tube, and then you end up dumping antifreeze down in that little funnel looking thing there. So take this off first. Now that we got the dipstick tube out of the way and the knock sensor, now we can pull the thermostat line. What a bitch, huh? A little bitch. All right. Got the clamp off. Pull the thermostat line. It's gonna dump, dump antifreeze all over the place. Oh, I caught some of it, which is nice. All right. I'm gonna blow the antifreeze off of the. Uh, Off the oil dipstick tube funnel. We'll just call it a funnel. That's kind of what it looks like. Now the dipstick tube can be removed. Let's get a little twist here. Right, get a lot of dirt and crap in there. There's just a um, there's an O-ring holding that together in there. We're going to be reusing this, so try to keep it nice, okay? Keep it nice. AC compressor. It's got three bolts. One here. One here. And one on the top. There's one up there. It's not cheating. Do you? Before we go any further, I want to examine the intake on this uh, 2012 Prius V with 150 or 250,000 miles on it. 250. There's a ring of oil around the intake. That, that's you know, that's an indication that there's a lot of oil going through the intake coming from the EGR or the PCV, but I'm, I'm inclined to believe that it's coming from the PCV. Well, let me, let me rethink that. I think it might be coming from the EGR. Let's take a look at the EGR. It doesn't look too oily, but 
at any rate these freaking engines burn oil like crazy and then they blow it back into the intake and that's what you get you get this freaking oily carbon buildup that fouls up your spark plugs it fouls up your EGR it fouls up everything it's disgusting and uh, Toyota is the is the creator of this so I don't know just good oil rings will fix this problem all right just replace the engine with a good one. after you remove the AC compressor see here's the AC compressor it was bolted in down there so after you remove the AC compressor leave all the lines and everything hooked up leave the uh, leave the electrical connection hooked up and what you want to do is you want to tie it to this latch the hood latch because that's the that's the strongest thing that is going to stay in this car that's close to the AC compressor so just just tie it up to the latch there okay. so once the wiring is free from behind the engine and everything you can just take it, just drape it over to drape it over the fender over here. Looks like we got a few more things to contend with here, but we'll get that worked out. So that's where the wiring goes. Just lay it over to lay it over the fender. It'll be fine. That'll leave you a lot of room. Remove this hose, remove this hose, and remove this hose back here. Now if you'd like, you can take the panel off inside the wheel well, and that'll give you access to the harmonic balancer. Now if you need to get in there, you can just turn the wheel, you can turn the wheel by hand. And that'll give you enough room. Now it's time to remove that water pump. Just gonna get in here behind there. Twelve millimeter socket. Oh, wobble. Use a deep well. Alright, it's time to do the 
exhaust manifold and the EGR cooler uh, attachment at the exhaust manifold. So I'm going to break these nuts here on the EGR cooler to the exhaust manifold. So there we go. Got that one broke loose. Now I got to go underneath to finish it. So that's what your exhaust manifold looks like from underneath. See that? And that's where the EGR cooler is. That's where the connection is for that. So you just gotta reach your arm up through here and snag that. Let's see? There it is. Right there. And then you just break it loose. Watch your eyes. It's the same way with the with the exhaust manifold. See, so just get on them, just get on them, and break them. It's tough. And then you need extensions for that one. All right, you can get this.